So we've now architected out our application and we've got a pretty good idea of what we want it to look like. So let's start working our app. The first thing that we're gonna do here is hook up our Firebase data store. So to set up Firebase, pretty straightforward, we need to tell it what account our application belongs to. In our code so far, we've included the React Fire library and the Firebase library. The Firebase library is the library that's going to actually reach out to our online database, grab data, and bring it back to our client. So it serves really as the bridge between the online database and our application. Once it gets to our application, we need to somehow feed that data into our React component. And that's where React Fire comes into play. So React Fire acts as the bridge between Firebase and our actual component. So the first thing we need to do is tell Firebase where to go to fetch its data. To do that, we'll flip over to our web browser, open a new tab, and we'll go to firebase.com. Once we're here, we can just go ahead and log in and we'll see all of our uh, existing apps uh, already in here. We should probably only have one right now unless you've gone ahead and added a couple more. I've gone ahead and added or changed the name, the default name to to do's. If you want to do the same, you can click on the gear over here and then just click on change name. Pretty straightforward. Cool. So we'll now click on this link right here. You should see some kind of funny little name dot firebaseio.com. And this will take us to the dashboard for our particular app. This big window right here is empty right now. But in a little bit, as soon as we start adding to do's, this is where we're going to actually see our data start to pop up. Right now, we have no data, so just null. So to hook up our Firebase object to this application that we're looking at right here, all we really need is this URL at the top, believe it or not. I'm going to copy it and bring it over to our app. And then on a new line, We'll say var root URL, and then in parentheses, or excuse me, quotations, we'll paste that link. Make sure that your link right here has a slash on the end of it. That's gonna be a little bit, uh, pretty important in just a second here. So now that we have this root URL, which is where we want Firebase to reach out to, to look for our data, we need to now feed this URL into the Firebase object. So we're gonna create a new instance of Firebase that looks specifically at this URL. We only, want to this, we only want to create this lookup, this Firebase object one time, and we only want that to happen when our component is rendered to the DOM. So there's a really handy uh, native React method called component will mount. Any code that is inside of this function now is going to be ran exactly one time, and that's whenever this component gets mounted to the DOM. So in our case, we really only expect that to happen exactly one time. So this is where we're going to initialize our Firebase connection. We'll say this, and we'll talk about the code here in just a second. Let's write it out first. We'll say this dot bind as object new Firebase root URL plus items and then items again. And we'll put a forward slash on the first items and semicolon. All right, so again, what this line of code right here does is it creates a new instance of Firebase, which is our the object that's going to actually make network requests and communicate with our online database and we tell it exactly where to look for its data. It's gonna look for its data at our application URL slash items. So slash items is going to be a kind of a nested route, a nested resource of where our data is gonna be stored. And we'll see in just a minute here how that manifest, or in the next section, how that manifests itself on our data. Then, uh, this is the more interesting part, and this is the part where React Fire comes into play. Where let's ignore this items over here for just a second, and let's focus on the method itself. 
bind as object. Now this isn't a React method. It's not something that React gives, uh, gives us, but we're referring to this method on this, which means that our component is somehow going to know about this method called bind as object. So bind, of, bind as object is a method that's given to us by React Fire. Remember, React Fire is what acts as the bridge between Firebase and React. So you can kind of, you know, it kind of makes sense here. It's kind of taking our React components and translating it, or excuse me, and somehow binding it to this Firebase source of data here. So we need to somehow uh, make sure that this method is available in our component. Again, it's not a native uh, React method, and it's certainly not anything that we're going to define in here. Uh, it is a method that is defined by React Fire. So the way that we include this method in is we'll say mixins, make sure you get the plural, the S, and we'll say mixins React Fire, and then a comma. So a mixin is, you know, the first question here is obviously what the heck is a mixin? <laughs> uh, a mixin is a group of methods that sits on one object that gets copied over to another object, in this case, this. So by writing mixins react fire, what we're really doing here is we're saying any methods that are available on react fire, literally copy paste them over to our component. So this is a fantastic way that React uh, provides us, a fantastic method that React provides us for really very easily reusing code. You can imagine that if I had 30 different components and they were all variations on say like a checkbox, well chances are I might have a lot of shared code between those 30 different checkboxes, right? They're, you know, Maybe they're all just a slightly different color or have uh, you know some tiny little difference between them. I can make a single generic checkbox as a mix-in and mix it into all of my other 30 variations. So again, a mix-in, all it does is it copies code from this object onto our component. Okay, so let's look at this line in total now. We create a new Firebase object that points at our particular URL any data that comes from that object is bound onto our component through bind as object, and that data is placed onto this dot state dot items. So that's where items comes into play, this string at the end. So really after this line right here runs, we would expect to see this dot state dot items be an object. And this object is gonna contain whatever data is sitting over here inside of our Firebase data store. Okay, so believe it or not, that's just about everything we need to initialize our connection to Firebase. So let's uh, do a little test here and make sure that it's working. Inside of our render method, we'll say console.log this.state. Remember, like I said, this items right here, Firebase is going to bind any data that's found at this address onto this.state.items. So we're just gonna look at state here, and basically what we're gonna to expect to see is you know, some form of data. In our case, we don't have any data yet, so we're probably really just gonna see an empty object. Flip back up over to the browser, make sure our console is open, and remember by saving the document, that's what triggers a reload of our, uh, our application over here, so let's go ahead and save it and there's our reload, and cool, all right. So we have uh, distinctly, very important, two console logs here. You can see that we twice got a console log out of app.jsx. The first time, this.state was null, and the second time, we have items, but we, we, or excuse me, we have a key on here, but the key items is null, all right. So first off, let's ask ourselves, why are there two console logs? Well, the reason for that is when we first create an instance of our component, which is, remember, the var element down here, and then render it to the document, that's going to render this component and put it onto the document, right? We've seen that before. We know how that works. 
So the first time that we render the, or when we immediately render this, um, this component, it runs this render method right here. And so we immediately get a console log of this.state. We haven't initialized this.state to anything. So of course it shows up as just being null. But we somehow get a second console log in here. And the reason for that is that whenever Firebase successfully loads data or detects a change in our data, it will re-render this component. And that's something that is going to make our life for, make, uh, for creating this uh, to-do list really, really easy. So this is gonna be a recurring theme in the coming sections here. Whenever our data changes, this dot state is gonna change, and that's going to cause a re-render of our component. Okay, so again, we'll explore this kind of mechanic in great detail in the coming sections here. Speaking of next sections, let's get on to the next section and start building the user interface.